everybody, today's video we're going to talk about SDDC to SDDC from a DR perspective, as well as touch on multiple SDDCs sharing a single customer connected VPC. So as you can see here in the diagram, uh, my home lab sitting here on the left hand side, I have two VPNs, one going to SDDC1 and the other going to SDDC2. I have a VPN tunnel between SDDC1 and SDDC2 to allow communication between the SDDCs and each SDDC has an ENI connection into their respective availability zone. So SDC1 is in availability zone 1D, and so are their ENIs. And the same thing with SDC2. It's in availability zone 1A, and the ENIs are in availability zone 1A. I have workloads sitting inside these SDCs. Top one, SDC1, is on 172, 11, 11, 0 24 network. The SDC workload here is on 172, 22.22.0 slash 24. I'm going to use these VMs to do ping tests to this EC2 instance sitting in availability zone 1A. So that's a quick high level view of what we're trying to accomplish. So let's jump into it. So as you can see here, I have two SDCs, SDC1 on the, on the right hand side and SDC2 on the left. We'll look at the networking. For the sake of this video, just to speed it up and not waste everybody's time, the VPN configuration is going to be very similar between the two sites, as well as the firewall rules. Uh, the only things that are going to be different is the source and destination stuff. I have uh, two VPNs and I have the SDDC connected to a connected VPC. So if we go to segments here, you can see I have my app one tier, which is 172.11.11.1 slash 24. This is the network that has a VM called SDDC one dash VM. And this VM, we will later on in the video be doing an SRM failover using HCX L2 extension. So it, the IP address can remain the same. So now let's look at the VPN configuration. So I have two tunnels, SDDC1 to home and SDDC1 to SDDC2. And you can see both the tunnels are up and we'll jump into the gateway firewalls. So I have two rules for VPNs that control inbound and outbound access for that virtual machine to any of the VPN tunnels. So whether it be SDDC2 or the tunnel back to my home lab. And then I have an outbound to the connected VPC, which is the using that VM and the connected VPC prefix over the VPC interface. Now you would typically want to have an inbound rule too as well if you want your EC2 instances to communicate with your workloads inside the SDDC. For this demo, I chose not to do that because I'm not really focused on the connected VPC. Per se. If you are interested, I did make a video that talks about setting up the ENI connectivity between the SDDC and the connected VPC, as well as terminating VPNs on the transit gateway. I'll leave a link in the description below. So now if we click on the management gateway, uh, I have quite a bit of rules here as well. So I'll start with the top, HDX uh, outbound, that allows HDX to communicate with any destination. vSphere replication outbound and SRM outbound rules allow both of those appliances to communicate with the SDDC2 infrastructure subnet. These two inbound rules allow the SDDC infrastructure subnet and my home network to communicate with the vSphere sort of replication appliance and the SRM manager. Below that is the inbound to HCX. So this allows the SDDC2 HCX public IP address to hit the HCX appliance on the SDC one, as well as my home network, so I can manage ACX. And then lastly, there's an inbound rule that allows me to manage vCenter for both SDCs. In this case, this rules specifically the SDC one, and it allows uh, SDC two infrastructure subnet to do um, SRM pairing with vCenter. So I'll jump down to the connected VPC here, just to show you that here's the account information. Uh, SDDC1 is attached to this subnet in AWS, which is the 172.33.48.0 slash 26 network we talked about earlier. And SDDC is in US East 1D, and so is the ENIs in the connected VPC. And this is the active ENI. So if you go over to SDDC2, click on the connected VPC, you can see it's using its different subnet, 172.33.48.64 slash 26. And it is an availability zone, US East 1A. And this is US East 1A, this is SDC. And this has a unique ENI it's using. So this is the EC2 instance that we're gonna do our ping test to, which is this 172.33.18.191. So let's look at the VPC. That is the connected VPC. So if we go to your VPCs, uh, this is the VPC we're using for both SDCs. And if I click on subnets, 
you can see that I created two subnets, one for SDDC1 and the other for SDDC2. And if we look at the route tables, you can see VMC by default will always use the main, will only use the main route table for that VPC. So in this case, VPC C here, this private subnet C route table is the main route table. And if we look at routes, we can see that we're learning the routes from SDC one and SDC two. And the ENIs are unique as well, right? Let's jump back over to the services EC2 and we'll look at the network interfaces. Just to quickly show you that there are 17 ENIs for SDC two and another 17 for SDC one. And then finally, VMware on AWS, they use the default security group for that VPC. In this case, this is the default security group. And you wanna make sure you allow traffic in from those subnets as well. Let's go ahead and do a ping test. Select the EC2 instance that I want to ping. Look at this IP address. And I have uh, SSH sessions to both of those VMs already. I'm gonna do a ping test. Ping 172.33. Dot 18, 191. You can see I can ping that. And if I do the same thing here, 172, 33, 18, 191, I can ping that from the VM in SDDC2. So let's take a look at HCX. I've performed uh, the site pairing already between the sites. I'm gonna go ahead and edit this profile just so I can step you through the process. So you will select your, your, your sites, right? So SDDC1 and SDDC2. Click continue. And again, you would just select your profiles. They're already created for you in advance, being that these are both VMC SDDCs. Click continue. And then here you can enable the services you want to be available on this service mesh. So I can enable just network extensions if I wanted to, or I can go ahead and enable, you know, all the ones that are available. The whole purpose of me making this video was to see if this SRM integration was available. I know it's available for HCX Enterprise on-prem, but I, I wasn't sure if it was available in the, the VMC environment. And as you can see, it's not available yet, but I would imagine it's coming soon since they're showing it to you here. So we just have to wait and see. So select all your services, click continue. You're gonna select the external network. In this case, I select external network from the dropdown list here. And when you deploy these HCX appliances, you'll have two free IPs initially. Being that I already deployed this, it already consumed those IPs. So that's why it says zero. We'll go ahead and close these, click continue. This screen here is, is a, if you want to scale network extension appliance, so if you want to have more than one, you would come in here and make those adjustments. But for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to leave it to one and click close. Click continue. We are reminded that these two features here are HCX Enterprise features, so they won't be available yet. And we can adjust the, the bandwidth limits here. I'll just leave it at the default, so click continue. And this is a review of the topology. And lastly, you'll give it a name. So when you use this name here, this name is used on the VM names. So if I jump over to vCenter here, you can see SDDC1 to SDDC2. Top one is the interconnect appliance. The second one here is the network appliance, network extension appliance, excuse me. And the bottom one is the WAN optimization appliance. One thing, if you're looking at this UI, you might ask, Dave, I thought you deployed a single host SDDC. Why do I say two hosts? I did deploy a single host SDDC, but this host here is nothing more than a proxy host. It's essentially just the HCX interconnect appliance. So if you look at the IP address 10.156.46.25, and if I click on view all nine IP addresses, you can see that same IP address here that allows you the ability to vMotion uh, from one site to the other. Let's jump back to HCX. I'm gonna click close here. We're gonna talk about network extensions because that's what we're using it for, but they also have other services like migration where you can do bulk migrations or vMotion migrations to other data centers with HCX. I won't cover that in today's video, but if you are interested, let me know. Glad to make a video on the migration services as well as the disaster recovery services. But for the purposes of this video, we'll just look at network extensions. And as you can see here, I already extended the app one tier from SDDC one to SDDC two. And if we jump over to the vCenter in SDDC two, we'll see this L2E app one network segment right here. And what I'm gonna do now is do a ping test 
from my computer here at my home to the SDDC 1 VM. So 172, 11, 11, 100. I'm gonna let this run for a while and then we're gonna jump over into the vCenter SDDC. So this is the SDDC 1 vCenter. And you can see I have that VM actually running right now inside the compute resource pool. And if we go over here to the vCenter SDDC 2, we can see that it has this protection icon here. Um, so we're actively replicating right now using SRM and vSphere replication, the state of that VM. We'll jump into SRM. You can see I have the site pairing done already. I have networking mappings done. This is why we kind of talked about HCX first before we jumped into SRM, because you want to make sure you extend the network first. And that way, when you come in here and you do a new mapping, you can, you'll see the mappings segment show up on the SDC like I did here. So I selected the app one for SDC one, and I selected this segment here for SDC two, and I did reverse mappings. And then I went down the, down the row, right? I went down the folder mappings, resource mappings, storage mappings, and placeholder data store. And I did the same thing on the, the other SRM for SDC2. We'll click on replication. We can see it's replicating. The status is okay. And if I click on recovery plans and click on recovery steps, now we're gonna perform a failover, right? So it's gonna go through this whole process here, synchronizing storage all the way down to powering on the VM on the other side. So let me move this window over to the side and move this window to this side. And you can see we're pinging right now. We're getting about 48 milliseconds of latency, worse than when I was getting earlier today, I was getting 25. My kids must be streaming movies or something. But anyways, this is a uh, milliseconds to SDC one. I'm gonna go ahead and click off a failover and click okay, next, finish. It's gonna shut down the VM. You're gonna see me drop a couple pings. And when that happens, I'll refresh vCenter here. There you go, you see it, it shut down. And we see we are not getting any pings anymore. Unreachable. And the other host, the other VM on the other side should come up here. As you see, it's coming up. <clears throat> and we should start receiving pings again. So as you can see, now the VM is running live in SDC2. We've increased our latency uh, by three milliseconds or so. This is gonna go through the whole process of running through this run book here. And once done, I'll reprotect it and fail it back over. You can see the recovery completed successfully. And I'm just gonna reprotect, except now that that VM is sitting on SDC2, it's gonna reprotect it SDC1. And as you can see, it's protected over here. And if we go back over to Site Recovery Manager, this should be finished fairly quickly here. All right, so I'm reprotected, but I do not want this VM sitting on the side of the SDC. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly just run it again and fill it back over to the other side. There you go, the VM started back on SDC one side. It's powered off on SDC two side. So I'll just go back into SRM here once this finishes. All right, recovery complete, reprotect. That way we're making sure everything is ready in the event of a DR situation. All right, so as you can see, everything was successful. We go back to the site recovery manager here, replication. And we start back okay. So we are good. So that's gonna wrap up this video. Hopefully you found it helpful. I know I was having the same questions before I made this video around SDC to SDC DR, specifically around L2 extension. Hopefully you found the video helpful. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below and consider subscribing. Thanks.